What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the Heavy Wrench. Thanks for tuning in today. I appreciate it so much. You have no idea. All the subscribers I've been getting, all the comments have been real solid comments. I appreciate everybody's like, everything that you guys are doing. Following me on Instagram, that's starting to pick up. I'm going to try to put more pictures up there and get more stuff of day-to-day -day stuff that I'm doing um, versus the YouTube videos on this side of it. And I would like to ask all the subscribers and everybody that watched this video, if you've been to a school, and I'd like you to know what school you went to across the country, where it's at. So like for me, I went to Ferris State University in Big Rapids, Michigan. And my thoughts on it, it was a great program. It's been, let's say, 18 years since I've been in that program. But I've talked to some kids, some guys recently, some kids, some guys recently that are in that program, and it still sounds like a very solid program. So that would be my description in the comment below that I would appreciate from you. Um, and then tell me your experience about it, what you liked about it, if you think there's some gaps in it, if you think you're ahead of the game because you went there, that's great. I would love to see your kind of uh, experience from those colleges so I can maybe get a list together and you know get something out there on the web or on YouTube of what colleges are where for this industry. Uh, there's a lot of heavy truck guys. I appreciate those colleges too. Um, and let me know if that was your basis between the two as far as if, you know, it was heavy truck or if it was construction uh, there is a lot of stuff that crosses lines in heavy equipment to get uh, heavy truck um, and everything else I mean automotive the boats to I you can cross in anything from heavy equipment really um, so like I said comment below I would super appreciate it but today I want to talk to you about education okay I've been doing some training recently, and I've been doing training since I've been in this industry, okay, since uh, I've been 20 years of educating myself or getting educated for myself. Um, the biggest thing that I have to, have to address is if you want to get into this and you want to be successful and you want to truly be the best you could be, education is important. Uh, these machines are far more sophisticated than you can even comprehend if you're a kid in high school or a kid in, you know, a guy coming out of high school, let's say, or a girl coming out of high school. And it looks like a piece of machinery that just digs dirt. They are so far from that anymore. Now, there's some older machines that are out there that are just hydraulic systems. You pull a lever, it, you know, strokes a spool and sends her down there, uh, sends the oil down there to the cylinder and moves the cylinder or moves the motor or whatever it may be. But going to these classes uh, for new machines, they're getting so far advanced in what they're doing. Um, we've had CAN bus for a while. We're in final tier four emissions. We have a lot of controllers that really are manipulating the machine and how it works and when it does certain things so I guess what I'm here to tell you today is that if you don't have a base knowledge of of what's going on and how things are working it's very tough to jump to that next level of what they're doing you know I just recently went to a class and they're using uh, you know the old standard way of hydraulics was to pull a lever stroke a spool move some oil okay then we went to pilot, or the industry kind of went to pilot, and that's a great system too. You're using a little bit of control oil, and you're stroking a spool using that control oil against some springs, and that's great. Now, there's actually a valve out there right now, and they're using pulse width modulation to stroke a, to pull a coil, to send the pilot oil to the spool to actually move the spool to actually move the oil. Sounds like it's a delayed process, but it's pretty quick and you can manipulate that pulse width modulation or that coil to actually move the spool faster, 
bring it, make it jerkier, make it laggier, make it change the end of the stroke where your hand is proportional to what you're going to change that, and it's much quicker, and it's going to be a much more efficient design, I believe, and it's got some hoses out of the way. Now we're using wires to run down from the cab to the to the control valve, inside the cab to outside the control valve, taking some hoses out of the way, taking some time moving oil out of the way, and I don't see this being a bad thing. I think it's really going to be a good thing for the industry to start allowing us to use electronic control to control hydraulics. Now we're using that same thing in all sorts of different areas of these machines. So that being said, if you don't go to a place to learn the base, the basis of electrical and the basis of hydraulics and the basics you know, you got to understand that base core uh, component before you can understand how they're controlling it in a bunch of different ways. Because when you go to these classes for like from a manufacturer standpoint or from a company standpoint that's training you on these machines, they don't want to sit down and tell you how a control valve works. They don't have time for that. These classes, there's so much more information to give you. Uh, that's compressed and condensed that they only have so much time to teach you. Now when you go to these classes and you're prepared, let's say, and you know how a control valve works and how a pilot system works, and now they're just teaching you how the electrical portion works on that pilot portion, it's pretty easy to grasp and comprehend. Now that's not going to happen overnight. you know. And, and so, like I said, getting out there learning and going to a school that's actually going to teach you these things and keep you relevant. And so when you walk out and you're like, okay, I got my first job, uh, the company sees you working and sees you doing good and you're moving forward and this and that. And let's say you're a guy that doesn't have that base background or that, you know, knowledge that you got from a technical school or a college or whatever it may be and then you go to your first class and you're sitting there trying to figure out how a pilot system works or you know it's a log splitter you'll probably have figured out at that point who knows you might have the pilot system figured out but like I said you have to have that base knowledge there goes the uh, furnace fan kicking down or kicking up one or the other. Might as well grab a cup of coffee. But without that base knowledge of knowing how that log splitter valve works or how that pilot system works, they're going to be sitting there telling you, hey, we're using pulse width modulation to pull this coil. And you might be looking at them saying, what's pulse width modulation? I don't know what that is. How do I? And now the class is slowing down and you're not getting the full effect of the information you need from the manufacturer to be efficient at their repairs. And I see a lot of manufacturers going to this where if you don't go to their class and be technically trained on that certain piece of equipment, they're not going to want to pay your company warranty time for you to diagnose that repair. Now the repair it seems like they're okay with um, anybody doing the repair because I believe they have some sort of uh, base line of times that they're trying to collect and get together and you know they're paying you whatever they pay you and they'll tell you if you if you go over on the on the uh, hours or not but that's between your management or your company's management and the manufacturer kind of leaves you out of the loop on that one a little bit but still have to try to do the best you can to make that repair time as fast as possible because warranty is always tight. Um, you hear from the automotive guys all the time, oh, it's a warranty job, they cut your flat rate, blah, blah, blah. But come on, man, they do it to everybody. It is it is what it is. They don't pay any, the manufacturers don't pay enough warranty time. Plain and simple across the board. So that's just how it is. And you gotta suck it up and deal with it and do the best you can with that. So I, I do wanna, get out there that I think it's important for you to go to some technical training 
after high school and at least get some base knowledge of electrical, hydraulics, engines, transmissions. Those are, you know, AC is a big one. You know, that it's really a simple, complicated system. You know, we're getting more complicated, but it was a pretty simple system uh, to begin with. So those are my thoughts on what you need to do for college, why you should go or shouldn't go. Um, yeah, I guess uh, those are my thoughts. So if you get a chance, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. I would like to reach out to some colleges and some different uh, university types and see what's out there. So if you've gone to heavy equipment school, I'd like to compile a list of the country's heavy equipment schools and technical places that you can actually go to. So if you can help me out, I would appreciate it. Thanks for tuning in today. I appreciate it. As always, keep that iron moving.